Hello hackers, welcome to the new video where we are going to hack the high-level logic vulnerability lab from Web Security Academy and powered by Portswega. So guys, this lab, it doesn't validate the user input when you can buy an items for an intended price. And to solve the lab, we have to buy this lightweight LT3 leather jacket and we have the credential of winner and password of Peter. So guys, before moving forward, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and let's start. And uh, here we go guys. So first, let me go to my account. And now let me connect as a winner and the password of Peter. And here we go. And now you can see I have a credit of 100 US dollar. So let me back to the home and see my target. Go Now you can see this is my target. This is the leather jacket. And definitely I don't have enough credits to buy this leather jacket. So first let me activate Foxy Proxy. Let's go to the proxy, enter SpecTwice and go to HTTP history. And now let me analyze the workflow. So let's go to the view details of the leather jacket. And here we go. Now you can see the product ID is equal to one. Now let me scroll down and let me add this item to my basket. And here we go. Now you can see I have one item in here. Now let me go to the basket and let me try to place the order. And here we go. Now you can see I got an error. Not enough store credit for this purchase. So in here, let me deactivate Foxy Proxy and let me analyze the endpoints that I got. So the first one of them is the product ID equal to one and it returns the HTML page. So this is not going to be my target. Now let me see this post slash card method. And here we go. This looks interesting. Let me send it to repeater. And let me see the next post method, which is slash card slash checkout. And here we go. Let me scroll down and see its body. And as you can see in here, it's only have the CSRF token. And we have here the error message. So let me back to the repeater and let me analyze this endpoint. So let me resend again. And here we go. Now I got 302. So let me refresh the page and see what's happened in here. Now you can see the item equal to two and the total price is a change it in here. So this is definitely responsible for add items. So let me try to make it a negative in here and see what's going to happen. So let me say negative one. Let me resend again. And here we go, status of 302. Let me refresh the page and see what's happened. And as you can see, he said that not enough credit card for this purchase. Let me refresh again. Okay, so this is very interesting error that this input is going to be my target. So let me remove this negative sign and let me retry again. And here we go. Now let me refresh the page. And as you can see, now I have a quantity equal to one. So now let me activate Foxy Proxy again. Let me back to the proxy and let me see what's going to happen if I click to this negative button. And here we go. Now you can see I have this post method. So it's absolutely the same as I have. And here we go. Now we ha I have no errors in here. And as you can see in this body, it's absolutely the same as the method that I'm testing. So let me resend it again to the repeater and see the difference between them. So you can see it's post slash card and this one also post slash card. You can see in the body we have product ID equal one, quantity equal minus to one, and then we direction to the card. And let me see the other one. Okay, in here I have only the difference that product ID equal to one, quantity equal to one, and redirection to the product, not to the card. So there is no huge difference between them. So now in here, let me try to add the item. Let me refresh. And here we go. Now you can see I added the item successfully. And let me try to change this product ID to another product. So let me say product ID equal to two. And let me send. 
And here we go. Now I can guarantee that my basket is not empty. So let me refresh and see the difference. And now you can see the product ID equal to two appears in here, but the quantity equal to minus one. And you can recognize that the total price is a change it, which means something wrong happened. So if I calculate this one plus this one, so definitely it's not going to give me this price. So which means that this price minus this price is going to give me 1,271 US dollar. So let me try to send the minus item again and see what's going to happen. And here we go. Now I send it successfully. Let me refresh. And as you can see, now the total price is reduced. So let me put a huge number in here. So let me say minus 10. Here we go. Let me refresh. You can see I still not able to buy this item because I only have 100 US dollar and the total price is more than 500 US dollar. So let me resend again and let me refresh. And here we go. Now the total price is minus 100. So definitely the total price is less than 100. So let me place the order and see what's going to happen. And here we go. Now I got very interesting error. So he said that the card total price cannot be less than zero. Okay, and this is very interesting. So let me change the quantity to the positive. Let me say one and let me send again. So let me refresh. Okay, still negative. So let me send it again and let me refresh and here we go. Now the total price is more than zero and less than my total credits. So let me place the order. And here we go guys, now we finally solved the lab. So I hope that you learned how to think outside of the box to find these kind of vulnerabilities related to the business logic. So guys, I hope that you learned my video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and if you have any question or need any help, please put it in the comment below and stay tuned for the next videos.